What's going on you guys? Frost here and I am back with another video. In today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Zack Jungle guide. Zack Jungle is currently like incredibly strong. He is a high tier pick. He has very good engage potential. Late game damage on Zack is completely insane. It's like he is an assassin or something. He is unable to die really. You can get a whale in a lot of games with very very low deaths. Good jungle clear and overall highly recommend you, you would pick him up or at least try him out. Now, Zach was the most voted one out of the poll, so that's why I'm doing him right now. There will be more polls coming in the future, so if you want to vote for a champion, make sure to hit the notification and look for the community poll tab to like get an influence or get a choice in what champion is going to come next. So yeah, with that being said, let's get into the runes. Now, the runes for Zach, the main choice obviously here is Aftershock. Zach is a very health-based and tanky champion. You can easily proc Aftershock. Aftershock because he does have a lot of CC into his kit. So this is just going to be very good for survivability and a little bit for damage as well. But this is by far the best rune you can get. Now, following that up, you have Font of Life or Demolish. Demolish is good because of like the fact that Zack has a lot of max HP, so you can get a lot of turret damage with that. This can be very good for late game pushes or just early game pressure for plates. So with Zack's like, potential to gank and keep camping somebody without... like the enemy really being able to do much about it just because his gank rate is so high. This can definitely be abused and this would be like a good rune. But overall this is easier to use and if you're starting out I would recommend Fond of Life because like impairing the movement of enemies with the Zac is very easy and this allows your team to heal off that. Now following this up you want Conditioning. Conditioning is just to make yourself a lot more tanky towards the later stages. You get the percentage armor and magic precipice, you also get 9 base after 12 minutes. So this is just gonna like be very good for your high health like champion and this is gonna synergize with Aftershock as well. So this is just like a really good rune for Zack being extremely tanky later in the game. Now here you have like really revitalize is really good on Zack simply because picking up those blobs is gonna like allow you to revitalize more health. So I usually just pick this up. You can also pick up the overgrowth for more max HP or even unflinching if the enemy team has a lot of CC. All of these are viable. I just think revitalize with the extra healing can help you out more in a lot of situations. Now for the secondary tree, you have two options. You have the domination tree and you have the inspiration tree. For the domination tree, the rune you're really looking for here is the ravenous hunter rune. This is just gonna help you sustain a lot more. So you can go in, you have pretty high damage. With this and your blobs and everything, you're going to be able to easily sustain yourself through a lot of fights. This is something I quite like doing uh, a bit. You can try it out if like, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But it helps me out a lot in just surviving through fights and sustaining myself with combi like the combination of this and revitalize. And then also you're picking up your blobs and everything. You're going to be very healthy through a lot of fights. Now to synergize that, you want to get cheap shot. Impairing the movement again of enemies is very easy, so this is going to add a nice amount of extra damage. Sudden Impact really isn't like the one you want to go for, uh, doesn't provide you a whole lot. The cheap shot overall does more damage. So this is definitely something to try here. If this isn't the option, the more commonly used one as well, and a very viable choice is Magical Footwear with Cosmic Insight. Just getting that CDR from here and then also the extra boots so you don't have to spend money on that is pretty nice as well. So that's, that's the secondary option. CDR is really the main thing because CDR is the only thing that limits Zack since he has no costs. I mean it costs life but you can pick that life up with a blob so it really has no cost at all. And yeah this is the way to go. Now for, this, for these runes here you definitely want to get the CDR here because again CDR is really good on Zack. You don't really need any of this here, so just the CDR. And then what you just simply do is you pick up armor or magic resist in either. You can also pick up health if that fits into the enemy team better. But usually I'll just like prioritize whatever I can against like an early game jungler for like Lee Sin for example. I will just go double armor to just make sure that he does a lot less damage to me and I will have the potential to maybe 1v1 him or tank him out when he invades me. Now, uh, you definitely do not want to underestimate Zack's 1v1 potential because he has a lot of damage. So, picking up like 12 extra armor against a Lee Sin like that would easily allow you to potentially win that 1v1. And that's really why I do it. Now, the resistances here could also be double magic resist if you're facing more AP. But you can also hybrid it in armor and magic resist or armor and HP. So, it's really just pick defensive stuff. 
you really don't need the damage aspect of this so you're more than set on that front the main thing here is just make sure to pick up the cdr because this is just really really good on zach so that's really it for the ruins if you guys have questions on the ruins make sure to put those in the comments below and let's just get right into the item build now right so for the item build on zach we have the start of a hunter's talisman and a refillable potion this is just like a very standard start also with the trinket you want to pick this up early place it defensively to like pre prevent yourself from getting invaded and also to get some vision get some information to know if you have to mirror jungle or whatever place this water 50 seconds reset get a sweeper it's going to help your gank afterwards and yeah really that so overall yeah just the sweeper is what you're going to end up with now your initial item you want to rush for is the cinder hawk with a blue smite this is just going to be your main item. The uh, Cinderhawk is going to help you in clearing your jungle. Blue Smite is going to help you in catching people. When you're like ulting, you can Blue Smite them, get a little move speed, get the extra distance, and that's really the, the combination there. Now, the way you want to build this is really just um, you want to go for the Blue Smite first, usually since this helps you gank. However, if you have 900 gold on your initial back, you just want to pick up this Bounty Cinder because this is just going to provide you in in just more like getting more clear speed now if if you don't have the 900 gold if you back with less if you back with 650 then just get the blue smite aspect this is going to help you more when it comes to the ganking stage then and that's really that so really just rush towards this item and only buy this if you have enough money to just buy it straight away now moving on from there you want to just get boots if you have magical footwear you don't have to get these boots you can just build into your next item and just wait for your boots to appear but if you have the other tree with the revenous hunter then you want to get boots and those boots will build into ninjas or mercs it is kind of whatever this is the same thing for the uh, magical footwear users you can just buy these boots whenever the magical footwear kicks in now right, this can be early this can be a little bit later but it's really no big deal there now your main initial item on zack is uh, the warmox Warmox on Zack is really, really good because you have a lot of base H like high HP. So as soon as you pick up this Warmox, you're already going to hit the threshold of getting the effect of Warmox. So this is really good there. This combination of this with Warmox is instantly going to proc that. So this allows you to constantly keep going aggressive, keep going in, use Warmox to reset your HP. Also, Warmox is very health, high health based, so you're instantly going to go above 3k HP. And the synergy with that and your aftershock is going to be immense because you're just going to gain a lot of like armor and magic resist from your aftershock after every 20 seconds basically. So if you play around your aftershock with this HP with also the fact that you can use Warmox's healing to heal yourself back up through fights. You can really go in and out of fights consistently without like risking anything and having the enemy team burn a lot on you. So Warmox is really amazing on Zack, and that's definitely his core item, just to pick that up first. Now, going from here, this is where it just kind of turns into whatever fits the enemy team best. Now, there are just tank items that are going to be good for this. So you have, like, armor items in the form of the Thormill would be good. You have Stone Plate, which is going to be very, very good. Randuins can be very good into certain enemy comps. And that's really, I think that's pretty much it for armor items, right? Also, you don't really have to finish your Thormill like really fast. If the enemy team has like, for example, a Kane and a Vladimir or something like that, just something that, that really procs that, bra like that really needs that healing reduction, you could just pick up the Bramble Vest and then maybe build Magic Resist right after if you have to or just anything. Just try to pick this up for healing reduction wherever you need it because healing reduction is a very, very valuable thing to have on you so this would be armor items you could pick up you can pick up the magic resist items here as well adaptive helm could be good spirit visage is very good on zack if they if like if you have the opportunity to build an, a magic resist item usually spirit visage is the best one simply because this works well with the healing received works with your blobs and everything so you're going to be able to heal yourself for a lot so that's really good there also you can pick up the abyssal mask to increase like damage from your team and also your damage as well if you want this is just like optional magic resist items now usually what i would go for on magic resist wise like let's say uh, the enemy team is pretty magic magic ap heavy i would build this with the mercs if i need them if they don't really have cc i can go ninjas as well but 
Again, magic damage heavy would mean that Mercs, the extra magic resist, would be more valuable there as well. So that could be a thing. And then I just built a Spirit Visage for the magic resist item. And also the increased healing, which is going to be very nice to synergize with that. And then off of this, you have the other item, which is going to be insane on Zack. It's just a really, really good item. You can opt to go for the Leandris. If you are doing well in a game and you can easily afford to do this, as like a fourth to fifth item, Leandris is pretty much god tier. Because this gets to the stage where Zack is like level 15 to 16 ish or higher. And you're just gonna 1v5 the enemy team in like any team fight with this item. And it's just it's just incredible. Like it's it's insane. Like this item alone gives Zack so much damage that yeah, it's very worth picking up. Now, if the enemy team, like, if you need more armor into the enemy team after the Spirit Visage, you can. However, usually, you have to keep in mind that the Aftershock provides you with a lot of resistances as well. So, if you use that properly, you can then definitely still opt to go for just a magic damage or, like, a magic resist setup like this. Without going armor and just building a Leandry still. But, again, you need to be ahead for this to work. And, yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, armor items here, you can then finish this build off, for example, with like a Thornmail. It makes it that if they start hitting you, they get like reflected damage back, which is cutting like do more damage as well and just give you a massive amount of armor on top of that, which is really good. If they have crit, you can get the random ones here. The healing reduction is usually the one I value the highest because at this stage in the game, if you were to pick it up as like a sixth item, you already have a lot of health, like a um, immense amount of HP. So just getting something with a high armor value is going to be the best one there. And the healing reduction for 80s, but for like lifesteal from ADC's late game. Or if the enemy team has like a Vladimir or a Kane or anything that just has to sustain itself, this is going to be very good there. It's really just a, a matter of building whatever fits and whatever is going to give you the best resistances into the enemy team. So yeah, I hope the build path is clear to you guys. If you guys have any questions on it, just put it in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well. And yeah, let's just get right into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing Zack, of course, into a Shaco. Now for Zack, um, Shaco is not that great of a matchup early game. Uh, Zack's early game is pretty weak and you're looking to just full clear. And since Shaco can definitely play aggressive on you if he wants to, this could end up being a problem. So for that reason, I'm going to play very defensive and place my wards defensively as well. So as you can see me wait right here, my plan is to start red buff and then clear down because the gank on bot lane could be very good here. Also, I think Shaco is going to start here and clear up. So this is for me a way to clear the other way. Plus with Zack, it's very good to do blue and gromp at the same time. You can do that starting pretty much level three onwards. So I usually try to path in a way that I can do them at the same time since this is very, very time efficient and does help you out quite a bit in like your jungle clear speed. If you were to do these one by one, it will take you quite a lot of time because you have less blobs to get and just less overall like damage. Your damage is fairly low so it might as well be on two, two camps at the same time to speed that up. So my plan here is I place the ward at about 50-ish seconds, then reset. I'll place the ward here because if Shaco were to path like maybe um, Raptors and then red and then go over the wall and take my blue or something, that could be a thing. So I'm just going to be wary of that. Usually good Shaco players, however, will just um, farm early game themselves as well so they might do like this the entire bot side and maybe invade then or maybe then look for a gank or they just kind of full clear ish to get a little bit of a good position so a lot of shaco players and higher elos usually don't go for like an early level two cheese but i definitely want to make sure that i do ward against it just in case he does because if he does then i have to know because if he is here then i can take his top side when i have done these camps I backed, I picked up a sweeper. This is also going to be very beneficial as well. So this, this is just going to work against Vision and against Shaco. It's very, very good. Now here, I'm just going to start here. You still want to start your W because this gives you the most damage. 
Just hit it, pick up the blobs whenever you can. Always try to make sure that you use your W before you pick up your blobs. Because it will reduce the cooldown. And this is just, like, the most efficient way to kill your cams, really. So as you can see, I'm just going to go here. My, my goal as Zack in the early game is just to full clear, get my levels. You need to get to level 4 to level 5. Because then you're going to have multiple points in your E. Because as of right now, your E range is very, very short. And this will scale up with levels. So level 4 to 5 is when you want to start ganking. Before that, you just want to full clear. You just want to focus on getting your camps, getting your experience. And with Zack, this is really no big deal. He has a pretty good and healthy clear. As you can see, there's really no issues here. I'm instantly moving towards blue in this case. Simply because I, as, as I mentioned... If the Shaker were to have done like these three camps and invade here, we would have been done at approximately the same time. He would have been doing it, but I would have been there. So I just wanted to check my blue first. Now, as you can see on the map here, obviously he did like a clear going upwards. So I'm completely fine, but yeah, no Shaco. So as you can see, I'm just going to pull the Gromp and the blue together in this specific spot. You don't want to walk like too much to the Gromp side because as you can see, the blue will be resetting at that stage. All you need to do to do this is just like put them together, put your E down, put your W and just keep picking up blobs right after you press W because then your cooldown is getting reduced and you're going to be able to sustain yourself. Now we see Shaco topside which is very good for me because this just means I have free reign to just take some whatever I want. Also this would mean that I could gank potentially bot lane here without Shaco being able to be there. So I initially just uh, like knowing that I'm just gonna see because this wave, as you can see right here, this is gonna get cleared and it's gonna push up a little bit this way. If my bot lane allows this, which if they see me bot lane, they, sh they will and they should. So as you can see, they, they walk back a little bit here and this wave goes up. So I have a position to walk in here. I walked like, yeah, this right here. Trish jumps in first, which isn't that ideal. I was kind of hoping to get the first engage just by like jumping in. That would have been better. Or for Pike to maybe hook. So Trist goes in, kind of just gets really screwed over by Alistar and dies, which is not ideal. But yeah, it is what it is. Now all I want to do is get this into the turret, really, if I can. Pike lands a really good hook, so I'm just going to go in on that. I have my passive, so I'm not that worried about dying, as you see. Like... If we kill the Misfortune there, there's absolutely no chance that the Alistar would kill me. Also, since we just saw Shaco top lane quite recently, there was no way he's going to be there right now still. So that's why I just jumped in, used my passive there without too much of an issue. Now, Shaco did gank the Fiora. And the Fiora now has two kills because she got a return kill and now solo killed the Jax. What does this mean? Now, for Zac, you want to make sure that you just gank whatever lane is going to give you a huge, like, it's going to be an easy gank, of course. You want to just put your teammates ahead. Now, if you're into a Jax, two kills is still manageable for Jax. He could still come back from that. So this is the point where I decide, all right, I'm just going to go and camp top lane for like two or three kills. So that these, the, the Jax is completely out of the game. And this will just mean that Fiora can snowball this through and through. So Fiora's backing right now. I'm just going to... Clear my camp. Just make sure that I get some experience here. Just need to make sure to keep that experience going. I'm level 5 now, so my E range is pretty big. And now with Fiora back in lane, I can like look for a top gank. Now in this situation, I was initially looking to maybe gank Diana if she would walk a little bit too far. I do have a Twisted Fate on mid lane. Twisted Fate stun card into a Zac, you know, like CC chain. They will not be able to move. They will guarantee die from that. So this would, this would also be a very free gank. Now, right here, we see the Shaco on bot lane. TF ulted. I would never be able to get here on bot lane in time. TF will. So if TF goes bot lane, we, we could be fine. But Diana, Shaco are both. So it's a 4v2 and 4v3 in that situation. That's a bit risky. But like I take this opportunity to just go and get top lane. Because I will never be able to go and be bot lane. Now, as you can see with the level 5 range from E. This is like what I plan to do. Just get the Jax out here. So you see him to the minion. Try to give the kill to your Fiora because, well, you're a tank. You don't necessarily need kills. Jack Shaco stop side. Nothing is up, sadly, so that's a little bit unfortunate. And right here, I'm just going to go and do my Krugs and my top side again. I can here again look to go for Jax, as I mentioned earlier. This is what I mentioned with the going for a lot of kills. 
I right here, he does um, get the ward hop, so I don't land my Q, but here it's impossible for him to get away, really. I'm just gonna flash for it, just simply because I don't want to waste too much time, since Diana was missing from mid lane, and also Shaco, I knew he was somewhere topside. So the longer I take to get on this uh, Jax, or if he were to be able to walk here, I would then lose out on the gank, and that would not be ideal. Now, this was the plan I had. The, uh, Fiora had a, had a slight lead, now she has four kills. At this rate, Jax has no way to come back from this one, so I might gank it one more time. But usually, at this stage, I'll just go and move on to maybe ganking the Diana, or maybe going bot lane, because Fiora is now set. Now what I did here, by the way, this is something you can do on Zac. Um, this is a small trick. Zac E, if you have enough range, you can position yourself to like jump here. But you will go through the pit. Which means, I, I thought Shaco might be doing Rift Herald. But I don't just want to jump in and I don't have any wards. So what I do is I just E pass. As you see, I get vision on the Rift Herald just because I'm slightly in the pit. I E passed it and then I see it. He's not doing Rift Herald. That's perfectly fine, and now I'm just going to go and do my other camp here. My bot side is up, so I definitely want to look towards going there as well, because I just need to keep my experience going. Now, actually, the Shaco was, uh, like, the Diana moved here towards the, the towards the Baron, towards the Dragon, and Shaco is doing Drake, so there's really nothing I could do about that. I pretty much traded this one Dragon for the guaranteed win on top lane, which is definitely something I'll take, because the Dragon isn't that valuable, so I will 100% take that trade. And at this point, I'm just going to give the blue to Twisted Fate and continue clearing. Maybe look for a gank on bot lane right here. Now, something you can definitely do is just use your sweeper from here on out because the support could have warded this potentially as well. You're a Zac, so you can gank over this wall. So having a ward here for the enemy team isn't that uh, strange. Now here, Pike is scanning, I'm scanning. I see a ward, but the Alistar still goes in, which is really good. I have a lot of range on my E, so I can still join this fight quite easily. Now Misfortune does um, ult me and I get ignited, so I get into my passive, which is not that big of a deal. It's really no problem there. Now we see the Diana moving from mid lane, so I pretty much just start spamming back ping for my, for my uh, bot lane to back away. Now we do have a Twisted Fade, but the only thing to want to mention with this is he has like 20% HP, he has like 20% HP. If Diana comes in with ult, ignite, flash, whatever, she one shots him and him at the same time. Or her and him at the same time i guess i will probably lose my life as well if she like if we try to fight her so this is just definitely not worth it in the slightest the ideal play is just to waste diana's time here just back away and let's see if we shout in mid lane no yeah we would probably be able to win it if tf ults and but then we would lose trist and the pike which would definitely not be worth it now yeah, the only issue here is that my Tristana is a little bit uh, either blind or like stubborn. I don't know. So she just still dies to a Diana gank, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now TF now can just show up right after. Like he what he tried it ulting. Oh wait. Let me go back here. Diana was walking backwards towards mid now. TF got the play on the uh, got a play on mid third, which is pretty good there. He got a lot of gold from that. Now, we see the Misfortune kind of walk up too far. Now, Zach E range is really, really big. So, as you can see, Misfortune still here. I'm just going to go for the wave. I'm just going to start prepping my E. Twisted Fate wanted to go in, but Diana cancels him, which is fine. Um, I, I believe Twisted Fate survives, but I still get in range for the Misfortune there. So, she's pretty much guaranteed to die anyway because of my ultimate and just high amount of CC. Now, I definitely want to push that out. I... Yeah, well, this is just like... I don't know. I, I, I want to push that out and just reset. The Alistar wants to freeze this wave, which he walks way too far this way. Because right now I'm standing in this brush. Tristana's back in lane, which means I just get a free kill. Like, there's no way he can outrange my E, because my E goes to approximately here. As I see it right now. So, like, he either has to knock me out of my E, or he has to walk past this, like, like range here, which is never going to happen. So I'm just going to E... He knocks back the Trist, which is whatever, and we just get another free kill, I suppose. So that's that's a little bit strange on his part, but yeah. Pick this up. I'm currently sitting on 1300 gold, and I have a lot of range on my E still. So I, as you can see right here, like they go back the lane. With Pike, we can try to make a play, but I definitely at this rate want to back because I do have quite a lot of gold. 
quite breaks out, so I have to cancel my back again. This is just a uh, very eventful uh, situation right here. I'm just gonna go in and uh, tank whatever I can, do the engages wherever I can. Now, as you can see, the top lane is now 0-5. Fiora has the turret down already, and my uh, snowball idea for this situation was very good. Uh, she also already made like a solo kill or like, not well one solo kill herself and then also got a kill on the gank which is really nice but pushing that through and seeing something like that happen doesn't have to be top lane can also be mid lane can also be your bot lane always try to if a lane gets a slight lead try to push push that lead just so that the enemy cannot come back from it as zach this is very easy because you have a long range gank you have a lot of cc and the the if your laner has a lead, he's going to have more damage. You're not that high on the damage portion early game. You're starting to ramp up in damage way more towards the later stages of the game. So if you're ganking for a lane that has a lot of damage or a slight lead again, then you will be better off. Now here, I definitely at this rate want to back at some point because I have 1800 gold. I'm currently a little bit slacking on CS or a farm because I just had like a way extended fight on bot lane. So that's... It is just what it is. There's really not much you can do about that. And yeah, I'm just going to go and full clear my jungle here. Get through this as fast as possible. To get the XP. Drake is going to be spawning soon as well. So we can definitely look towards fighting that. In this situation, um, my likelihood of stealing this dragon is fairly okay. And as Zac, I value a mountain dragon very highly. Because this gives you extra tank stats, you are very healthy, like you have a lot of health on your champion, so a lot of the extra tank stats are going to be very, very good. So my passive is still down, which means that I will take the risk, even I'm, a, I'm only worth 150 gold, but just take all of this into consideration before you do something like this. Is your passive down? Yes. Okay, then you can try it. Um, if, if Is the dragon worth it? Okay, yes, then I will try it as well. So as you can see right here, I'm leaping from that brush into the drake. You have enough range to do this because, well, Zach, he does have a lot of range. I jump in on the dragon, as you can see right here. And yeah, I barely just don't get it at this rate. I, I barely missed it. I see now that Shaco didn't have smite, so this would have I would have not had to smite it that early. But my, my thought process there was I jump in. The enemy team might try to burst it or the enemy team's damage is going to come in and I'm just going to get it. I missed it on about like 80 HP or something, which is a bit unfortunate. But yeah. I go in there. Um, yeah, I missed a smite, so I'm just basically going to die off that. I should not have flashed out here because there was no way I was going to live through this one. So that's a bit of a waste of my flash. That's, a, that's the only mistake I made there. The, the, the attempt was fine because I didn't really lose anything for it apart from eventually my flash. Right here, fight's going on on bot lane, so I'm just going to instantly like walk past my camps. I want to get the position to be able to either cut off the Diana here or just be in this fight as fast as I can. So I just saw the Diana because of TF ult, so I'm just going to wait, interrupt her, CC her down wherever I can. And this yeah, right here. Right here, I'm just doing my camp, waiting for an opportunity to jump in. You have a lot of range on Zaki, so you don't have to worry too much about like standing towards the front line. You can always jump in to go towards the front line. Just doing this camp here is fine for me. TF lands a stun card, I decide to go in on a stun card. I Q them, I knock them together, and they pretty much both die. And TF does die there, sadly, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure Shaco dies as well. Uh, no, actually, never mind. Uh, I'm... I really want Trista back at this rate, but she is just playing very aggressive. At some point, I just decide to walk away and right here, give the blue again to the Twisted Fate. I have quite a lot of gold, so I definitely need to work to look to backing soon. The Diana misses her Q there. I like we get the jump on her. I jump on her. TF stuns her, and well, it's Diana, so she does a significant amount of damage, but she doesn't kill TF, so that works out for us. Now at this rate, this is where Zack starts becoming pretty much a monster. You have a couple of points in your W, you have a maxed E, and as you can see, just the amount of damage you have 1v1 is really high, whilst you're able to just tank very, very easily. So I'm just going to go and decide to 1v1 the Shaco here. As you can see, the damage I have is really high. He barely does any damage to me because he went AP route. If he went 
AD route, then I would have probably reconsidered this 1v1. But with the AP route, I definitely have a chance here to just uh, 1v1 him. Now, he uses his ult, which is honestly fine for me. And I'm just going to go and I, I assist being here to get my Pike and my Triss to join this red buff. Now, sadly, they like like Tristana is still in lane. Pike walks in from a strange angle, so I'm just going to walk away from the red buff here. Now, my next objective here is a dragon, of course. So I definitely want to go and look towards that. Fiora is now joining for the dragon as well, so we definitely have the advantage there. Now, the Pike is now getting chased down by the enemy team, as you can see. We have a Fiora here and a Twisted Fate here. Twisted Fate has ultimate, so I'm not that worried. We can definitely turn this fight. So what I'm doing is I'm walking into a position where they don't really see me. I'm kind of out of vision range right now, and I can definitely turn whenever I want. Here, Shaco pops up. I'm just going to return, eat a Shaco. I'm not going to, like, frontline too much, just because I do not want to waste my passive so, like, abruptly and easily, because the Diana ultimate, for example, will just destroy me. So I'm just going to CC Shaco. Wait on my cooldowns, walk a little bit back. I could wait on my ultimate and everything like that. As you can see, I'm walking to the side more. There's no reason to just suicide in straight forward and like stick to the front line. You just want to throw your CC where you can because I was quite low. I don't want to just like walk in and die really. That's yeah. So now we kind of were looking for Shaco in that situation. We thought he might go to the Alco. If he didn't, we can pick up a dragon off this, which is fine. Right here, and now I can finally back for my Warmogs. Now, picking up this, I will be able to easily just engage any fight and come out of that quite healthy. After a couple seconds, I'll be full HP again, and I can just do it again. Now, we see the Misfortune there, walking up a little bit too far, so we get a free kill on that. The Fiora overextends just a little bit too much. She has been doing that a little bit too much this game, but it's still fine. No, bro. Yeah, this is just a kind of a stalemate situation looking for an opportunity. The enemy team walks up, I can get the chance to E in, as you can see. Now the way you want to um, use Zac ult, by the way, is you want to try to position yourself behind them. Because if you jump in and just start ulting, they can go in all kinds of directions. But if you just position yourself in a way that is be like between th that sandwiches them between you and your team. Because then your initial bounce from your ultimate as you use it is going to just knock them back towards your team. So right here, as you can see, I'm just going to knock him. I'm ulting him to the side. Triss gets some free damage. I want to see C lock them as much as possible so Diana doesn't get the chance to jump in. Now, in this specific situation, I kind of thought Shaco went down. I didn't like really realize that he actually jumped in to play that fight out there. So that's a little bit my bad. Uh, that fight turned out a little bit worse than I thought. I tried making, like, only after I realized, I tried to make that play with my bot lane only. I didn't have my Fiora or my TF, which were the better laners in this game. Um, yeah, it didn't really turn out the way I wanted that to, so it's a little bit awkward. I survived, though, so it's okay for me. As you can see, I'm pretty much constantly full HP now as well, so I really have no issues there. Uh, a little bit unfortunate here that my Tristana takes my camp, because that camp would have been my next item. So now I'm gonna have to overextend on the map a little bit, even instead of just wanting to back for my item. Uh, this, however, does turn into a Diana kill and then a Baron setup. Sorry. Let's go back here. So the Baron right here. Now the way you want to play Baron with Zack is just tank as much as possible. Keep using your blobs. Because the more abilities you use, you put your blobs down, your blobs are gonna heal you for a lot of health and you're gonna be able to influence and sustain a Baron. So you will have no issues there. Now in this situation, I jumped in there. My E was kind of down at the point. I'm just going to focus and kill the Alistar. I'm going to go in here. I have my passive, so I'm just going to go in here to see them together. And then make my pike kind of clean it up wherever he can. Now in this case, I didn't really realize that the pike didn't have his ultimate. So it's a little bit unfortunate there. But Fiora, however, does teleport in on my passive. Which is very, very nice. So she gets back into that fight. I am kind of half HP, but I do have Warmox, so if I want to, I can wait for Warmox. However, you don't have to, because if you just keep picking up your Blobs, you will still be fine. As you can see, Blobs heal me for a lot of HP. I will stop the Baron there, simply because I saw this fight going on. I wanted to make sure that we win this one. And right here, we can finish off the Baron. 
Now the way as you see the play the team fights is just throw the, throw the CC wherever you can, try to get priority targets, CC them down, allow your team to be able to make a play off that. And that's really it, like you're just playing basic tank. Here we pick up, we're going to pick up a dragon, I have 3.2k gold so I definitely want to look towards backing soon. Alright, so I'm backing here, pick up Spirit Visage, pick up the part of uh, Leandri's hunting guys. Um, I definitely can easily go and opt for a hunting guys at this point. Pick up a Spirit Visit simply because they have like uh, 3 AP damage, like Jax does a significant amount of AP damage, Shaco is AP, Diana is AP, and Alistar does a lot of AP, uh, well he does mainly AP, not a lot. It's only Misfortune that I would have to worry about when it comes to the physical damage aspect and I'm kind of relying on my Aftershock for that so I'll be fine. So I can definitely opt to go for a Leandris here and just go and build some damage. Now this is the stage of the game where Zack is not only a tank, but also an insane damage dealer. So the late game Zack is just completely mental, like this champion is not fair when it comes to that. All you have to do is just really jump in, do damage, you'll just kind of like half HP the enemy team without an issue. As you can, I'm just gonna show you the damage values on this one. Let's go and hide the screen. So I jump in here, as you can see E lands. She pretty much loses half her HP to an EQ. I try to knock them together there, knock them together, CC them even longer. Get a lot of damage. I can pretty much influence tank, I'm not that worried. My blobs heal me for an insane amount, as you just saw, I got a plus 764. Just walking over your blobs whenever you can, plus 390. And plus 764, as you see, I'm pretty much just influence sustaining my health without too much of an issue. The infinite health sustain here is very easy, and yeah, at this rate, I'm down to keep fighting, but my team wants to back away, so I mean, I guess at this rate, I just back away as well. Pick up some camps, I'm very gonna be very close to my Leandris, yeah, Leandris is 1600 gold. I currently have enough, so I'm definitely just wanna look towards backing for that right now. Pick that up, and that's gonna be the biggest power spike I can get, since this will now allow me to pretty much 1v5 the enemy team without too much problems. As... I'm sure I'll see right here, actually, if I do remember this right. So this is just like, yeah, I'm a tank, by the way, ADC. Good, a good day. So I go in here, I land on this guy. As you can see, he pretty much loses his entire HP bar in like a second. He just dies. I'm still full HP, so I'm not that worried. I can go in here. I see this guy, knock them together. Right there, TF gets cancelled, so I'm pretty much in a 1v3 situation. I keep sustaining, keep picking up my blobs between my my uh, cooldowns, because then I will lower the cooldown for my W, I will do more damage, and really that's just the way to play the team fight. and yeah, Shaco does get away, but I kill the rest of their team without losing any HP, and that's really the power of late game Zack, just of one of that team, like, of, of a single team fight like that, you can see this champion is really not fair when it comes to the late game, he has really good early pressure as well, a tank champion, which is very good currently still in this meta, and overall good jungle clear as well he is like one of the best junglers you can play right now i would definitely recommend you to try him out i like i do think he's really really overpowered and needs a nerf at this point but yeah if you guys have any questions on zach make sure to put those in the comments below i'll do my best to answer those questions for you also if you guys have enjoyed this video please make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well and subscribe for more videos in the future and yeah see you guys in the next video bye